All right, good morning, everybody. Here we are. Um, I have not gotten around to grading those quizzes yet, so I'm sure that somebody's going to ask me at some point in time. I'll probably grade them today, probably, not sure. Anyway, um, let's go ahead and jump into the um, homework assignment that is due today. We're going to go through the ideal gas law problems, so a whole bunch of ideal gas law problems. And today we're also going to talk about something new, and that is going to be using the ideal gas law to solve stoichiometry problems, and also using the ideal gas law to get different kinds of what's known as combined gas laws so that we can solve those kinds of problems too. So we got two new things to talk about today, and um, the uh, good news is that I have a lab plan for you guys. Hopefully, uh, it's probably going to be the last lab that we do this year because these labs at home are kind of difficult to do with um, with anything you know that you guys pr likely have in your kitchen. Uh, but I'm going to be using a couple ingredients that I'm pretty sure you guys have, and I'll talk about that on Friday. So lab that I'll discuss with you guys on Friday. So um, so say hello to me in the chat if you're there. I see um, I don't know how to say that. Huda. Um, are you late? No, you're not late. We just begun. We've just begun. All right. So, all right. So I do need to make sure I skip out a few minutes early today and I might need to, so hopefully we'll get through everything, but I might need to go through things quickly to make sure we get through everything that I want to get through. And I don't know, you know, I might not be able to go through all the homework problems because I need to make sure I go through the new stuff with you guys. Anyway, um, I do have a, because next block I have a, uh, a test to give, so I need to make sure I leave here a little bit early. All right, with that said, um, seeing a lot of people here in the chat. Hi, hi, hi. Hopefully you guys are all doing well. And let's begin. If you guys have any questions, just stop me as I'm going, and I will look over at the chat and, you know, Try to answer your questions. All right, how could you use the value of R to figure out the ideal gas law? Now, you're not going to really need to worry about this because this is not something that you have to memorize because you know you have an open notes test or whatever. But just so you guys can see how it works, right? In the units of the ideal um, of the ideal gas constant or universal gas constant you have right here, liters atm per mole kelvin. So let me write this out this way: R equals 0 0.08206 liters atmospheres per mole Kelvin. Well, right from these units, you can figure out what the ideal gas law is, right? And so we see, well, this is R, and what is liters? Liters is a volume. What is atmospheres? Atmospheres is a pressure. What is moles? Mol moles is moles, right? Moles is N. And Kelvin K is going to be temperature. So right here, by just looking at the units in the ideal gas constant or universal gas constant, you have your ideal gas law right there. Okay. And so you can say, well, so if we want to multiply both sides by NT, well, that's going to get you PV equals NRT. And that's one form right here. This is one form of the ideal gas law. So fairly quickly, you can just get the law itself from the units of the universal gas constant. All right. So with that said, let's jump down to some problems here. Number four, all right, we have um, standard temperature and pressure of a gas is defined as one atmosphere and zero degrees Celsius. I don't know why zero seems a little bit strange, but that's what it's used. I suppose there's probably a reason behind that, although sometimes your standard temperature and pressure is defined as 25 degrees Celsius, and that's for different things like thermodynamics and not gases. So what is the gas of one mole of a gas at standard temperature and pressure? This is known as the molar volume of an ideal gas. Okay, so because these are all kind of one, one, zero. This is going to be fairly straightforward in terms of the calculation. And let's go ahead and do it. So we want to know um, what is the volume. So we're solving for V. So when we have PV equals NRT, if we're solving for the volume, 
we're going to go ahead and get volume all by itself by dividing both sides by P. So that's going to be volume is NRT over P. And N is 1 because it's 1 mole. So 1 mole. R is 0 0.08206 liters atmospheres per mole Kelvin. T is 0 degrees Celsius, but it's not 0. It's got to be converted to Kelvin, so that's going to be 273 Kelvin. All divided by a pressure, well, we said standard temperature and pressure is, well, 1 atm. Okay, so our units are going to all cancel out to leave us with liters as our units. We have 1 over 1, so these ones are going to cancel out. So it's simply R times your temperature, R times 273. So that's going to be 0 0.08206 times 273, which is 22.4. 22.4. And some teachers even have students memorize this. I don't think it's really important to memorize because it's so, so easy to calculate. But let me go ahead and do this. 22.4 liters. And that's, it's a nice number because it tells you, okay, approximately what is the volume or what is the size of a mole of gas? Well, a mole of gas is like 22.4 four liters. And we can think about this in terms of gallons. I, I mean, I don't know exactly how many liters are in a gallon. I think it's about 3.8. So I'm just whipping that up just for fun. Um, and so if there's about 3.8 liters per gallon, so we just divide this by 3.8. And so we're talking about um, almost six gallons. So one mole of a gas is almost six gallons. And if you're talking about room temperature, it's probably gonna be just about six because as you increase the temperature here, this is zero degrees Celsius, as you increase the temperature here, it's gonna be, um, I think I just had a comment. As you increase the temperature here, it's gonna be a little bit bigger. And so you're about six gallons for one um, mole of gas. Okay, anyway, if anybody even cares about gallons. It is a constant. What, it, what, it, what is a constant? What is a constant? So I got a comment. It is a constant. Just wondering what that's referring to. I'm waiting for your answer. I'm going to go ahead and start working on this one. So this is known as the molar volume of an ideal gas. Okay. And then some people find this to be an important number, but you can always calculate it. Very, very easy calculation as you see right there. All right. What is the volume of um, 0.47 moles of a gas at standard temperature and pressure. Well, you we could solve this by exactly the same way, right? Or we could even just um, pretty much multiply this number by 0.475, right? Because this is one mole, and so 0.475 moles would be that number times 0.475. Either way is going to work, right? And so the volume of, um, so volume is nRT over P. So we're going to be talking about, um, it's going to be 0.475 moles times 0 0.08206 times 273 Kelvin, right? Because standard temperature and pressure, this is standard temperature, and then all over 1 atm, right? And so it's just going to end up being just 22.4 times 0.475. So 0.475 times 0 0.08206 times 273 is 10.6, 10.6 10 liters. Okay. All right. Coming down here, now we got a little bit of a different problem. How many moles of gas are in one liter, right? One liter is kind of a little bit more of a lab type size amount of gas. And let's go ahead and do that one. Um, so if you have one liter of gas, and now we're solving for um, how many moles that is, so that's going to be, um, you can go ahead and rearrange this equation right here, but that's going to be PV equals nRT, or N, so divide both sides by RT, N equals PV over RT. Okay, and you're going to find that this answer Um, is also going to be fairly easy to calculate. So we have P 
once again, if we have STP, standard temperature and pressure, that's going to be 1 atm. Our volume, if we have 1 liter, that's going to be 1 liter. And this is R.08206, and temperature is 273 Kelvin. You're going to see that this is simply just going to be 1 divided by 22.4, right? If you, have, if you want to know, okay, what's the, how many moles are in one liter, it's just going to be one divided by that, okay? So we have on the bottom, one times one, so one divided by 0 0.08206 times 273. Need to make sure the bottom is all in parentheses, and we get out 0 0.04. 446. 0.0446. And that is going to be a moles. And if you take the inverse of this, you'll notice, oh look, that's 22.4. So this and this, they're interrelated. So this is the number of, or the volume of one mole of an ideal gas, and this is the number of moles of gas in one liter. Okay, and they're inverses of, of each other. All right, so that's the front page. Any questions, guys? So I've got how many people on? Eight. Look at that. It's nice. That's nice. Eight people. Um, eight people. Anybody got a question at all? All right. The volume, 22.4, is always 22.4 of any gas. Um, and right, yeah, sure. So just like um, Avogadro's law, right? Avogadro's law states that the volume of a gas is proportional to the number of moles. Now, um, this, like I said, 22.4 isn't that terribly important simply because, you know, obviously it's going to depend on your temperature and pressure and all that kind of stuff, but it's more or less a good number, you know, to have in the back of your mind. Um, the number is going to get bigger as the temperature goes up, right? And typically you're not at zero degrees Celsius, but, you know, it's still a good number to have in mind. All right, so let's go on. Number seven, so we're going to determine the pressure of a gas at 100 degrees Celsius to get this volume. So if we're solving for pressure, we've got PV equals NRT. Solving for the pressure, we're going to divide both sides by the volume. That's going to get us P equals NRT over V. Okay, and then just plug in these numbers here. We have 0.24 moles. R is 0 0.08206 liters atmospheres per mole Kelvin. Temperature. Now, temperature is 100 degrees Celsius, but we need to convert that to Kelvin. So that's going to be 373 Kelvin. And we do have volume units that are correct. They are in liters. So that's going to be 7.75 liters. All right, and so let's go ahead and do that. 0.24 times 0 0.08206. And you know what you can do? You can take that number, uh, and let me see if I have, my calculator gets re, um, yeah. So my calculator, anytime I change my battery, everything goes away. But you can put that number in your calculator. You can just store it. So you can go 0 0.08206, and we can store that as R in your calculator, and that way you don't have to type that in so many times. All right, save you, you know, a few seconds here, a few seconds there, but it's, it's useful, okay? So now we can do 0.24 R times 373 divided by 7.75, and that's going to get me my pressure, okay? And, and that's pretty close to 1. So we got 0 0.948, 0 0.948. And what are the units? Well, the units for that are going to be the units that you always have any time you're doing an ideal gas law problem, and that's ATM. Okay, 0 0.948 ATM. And then actually, you know what? I, I'm sorry, I only have two significant figures here, so really that should be 0.95 ATM. That's what it should be. Okay? All right. So number eight. Any questions, you guys? Just stop me here. Otherwise, I'm going to continue going. Number eight. De determine the volume of a gas. So 
volume and PV equals nRT. If we're solving for the volume, we're going to divide both sides by P. So volume is nRT over P. Plug in the numbers. N is 3.3 moles, 0 0.08206 times the temperature. That's 255, so pretty, pretty high temperature there. So 255 plus 273, that's going to be 528. All over the pressure of 0 0.0 or 0.8. 95 ATM. All right, so let's plug that in. That's going to be 3.3 R times my previous answer divided by 0.895. And that's going to get me 100 and about, so about 160. 160. So that's um, pretty large, but it's to be expected because we have more than a mole of gas, right? We have 3.3 moles of gas, so, you know, we are, we're expecting something fairly large here, plus our temperature is pretty high. And so, let me see, we have only two significant figures, so we're going to round that up to 160. 160, and the units are going to be liters. Liters are the units for volume. All right, number nine. We have determined the pressure, or I'm sorry, determined the temperature of this particular gas. Determine the temperature in Celsius. So we're going to first determine it in Kelvin and then convert it to Celsius. So if we have PV equals nRT, if we want to know the temperature, we're going to divide both sides by nR. nR, nR. So that's going to, nR is going to cancel out and that's going to leave us with a temperature is equal to PV over NR, which is, what's pressure? Pressure, 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 1.25 ATM, volume of 4.1 liters, N is 0 0.087 moles, and R is always the same, 0 0.08 206. All right, let's see what that works out to be. 1.25 times 4.1 divided by 0 0.087. And if I forgot the parentheses, you can just go ahead and go divide by like this. Okay? That's a good way to do it. All right. And we got 700 and about 718 Kelvin. 718 Kelvin. All right. Um, they are, it is, well, anytime you're dealing with temperature, I know we have only two significant figures, but we have temperature here. So I'm going to round it to the nearest whole degree because otherwise it's going to get all sketchy here when you, if you start, um, you know, rounding that thing. So this 718, we'll go ahead and, and subtract 273. Oops. Subtract 273 to get our degrees Celsius. Um, and that's going to be 445. 445 degrees Celsius. Those two are equal. Okay. All right. Questions at all? Nice. Moving right along then. Number 10. You have a certain gas, 90 degrees Celsius. That's your temperature. You need to convert that into Kelvin. All right, so let's do that. Oops, let's do that right away. 90 plus 273 is going to be 363. It's got a pressure and a volume of this. How many moles of gas are there? So PV equals nRT. If we're solving for N, that's going to be divide both sides by RT, and that's going to get us, RT over RT is going to cancel, so N equals PV over RT and 1.25 ATM and 0 0.065 liters, all divided by 
0.08206 R and the temperature of 363 Kelvin. Let's see what that works out to be. 1.25 times 0 0.065 divided by R divided by 363 and that's going to get me a final value of 0 0.0027 moles. 0 0.0027 moles. Um, kind of a small amount, but we'd expect a small amount, right? Because our volume is so small, right? We have a volume of 0 0.065 liters, which is 65 milliliters. So we're expecting a fairly small amount of moles, which makes a lot of sense, right? Okay. Um, last one here before we go through the, the little proof, and that's going to connect us to the t like t tomorrow's homework, or actually not tomorrow's, but the homework that's due Friday. All right, um, so let's do one more problem here. We've got determine the pressure. So we're, we're solving for pressure once again. PV equals NRT for solving for pressure. Divide both sides by volume. So pressure is NRT over V. And we have all this, oh man, this is annoying. So we have to convert all these things. So we have moles is good. The temperature in Fahrenheit, that's, that's all messed up. And then we have a volume in milliliters. So we have to convert all of these units to the correct thing. And then finally, we want to convert the pressure to PSI. So a lot of conversions in this problem. And this problem helps to remind us that you really need to make sure your units are the correct units because R depends on it. You can't just use any old units. So let's do temperature first. So actually, you know what? I'm just going to plug in these numbers and then we'll do them as we come to them. So we said N is 0.137 moles. R is 0 0.08206 liters, atmospheres per mole Kelvin. Got to make sure your units are right. And then Kelvin. So we need 59 degrees Fahrenheit into Kelvin. The first thing you need to do is convert it into Celsius. So we're going to subtract 32, divide by 1.8, and we got 15. So this is 15 degrees Celsius, and that makes sense. 15 degrees Celsius, 59 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, it's kind of a, you know, a, it's about what our weather has been likely uh, lately, um, 15. And then we're going to convert it into Kelvin by adding 273, and that's 288. So we got... 288 Kelvin, and then our volume. We have 563 milliliters. We cannot leave it as milliliters. We need to convert it to liters, so that's going to be 0.563. How did I do that? I just took the decimal point and moved it one, two, three spots to the left. That's going to get me, you know, 500 milliliters is about a, a half a liter, so that's going to be a half a liter, a little bit more than a half a liter, 0.563 liters. All right, so that we are all converted to finally get our answer for pressure in ATM. So let's just use that 288, 288 times 0.137 R divided by 0.563, okay? So that's my 288 times my 0.137 times my R, which I stored in my calculator, divided by 0.563, my volume, to get me 5.75. That's a pretty high pressure. 5.75. My units are ATM. Now, let's think about that for a second. Think, well, does that make sense? We have only you know a little over a tenth of a mole, but you have less than a liter, and so yeah, that kind of makes sense because you're com you're pressing compressing this gas into such a small volume. It kind of makes sense that you have a high pressure, okay? But last of all, it wants what's that pressure in psi, and we know the conversion between atm and psi. And that's fourteen point seven. So we have five point seven five atm. Right, and we said, well, one ATM is equal to 14.7 PSI. So we're just going to multiply that number times 14.7 to get us 80, almost 85. So 84.5. Yep. 
4.5 PSI. All right, so I've gone through all these problems and you guys haven't asked me any questions. So I, I'm assuming that means you're getting these right, which is good. Um, and so we got about 15 minutes left for me to go over this one and do the new stuff. And the new stuff is actually a little bit related to this. So I'm going to prove this. It's not exactly a proof per se, but we're going to use, so assuming the ideal gas law, let's look at how that's related to um, the other gas laws. Okay. And let's go ahead and let me, let me do it on a separate sheet of paper and we can just talk about that in general and how this is going to work. All right. So the ideal gas law states that uh, PV equals NRT. Well, in that ideal gas law, and there's a couple different ways you could do this, and I'm not going to say any particular way is right or wrong. So there's a, a number of correct answers for this problem in your homework. Um, but looking at this equation, we have one single constant, and we have four variables. What I want to do is put all my variables on one side of the equation. And in fact, when we came up with the ideal gas law, we kind of did this whole thing in reverse, right? So if I want to put all my variables on one side of the equation, I'm going to divide both sides by nt. That's going to get me r equals PV over nt, right? So my, on this side, my n and t are canceling out. So if got R equals PV over NT, right? And this is my, uh, another form of my ideal gas law, right? But if this is a constant, well, what does that tell us? If this is a constant, that means that we can now set up a relationship of before and after here for this PV over NT. And that before and after is gonna look like this. And you can say, okay, well, that means that P1 V1 over N1 T1 equals P2V2 over N2T2. So you can do it like that. And you can say, well, what if we're dealing with a Boyle's Law situation? If it's a Boyle's Law situation, well, we've said that N and T are constant, right? N and T are constants. So if N and T are constants, that means N1, T1 equals N2, T2. So these are, these are going to be constants. We can just completely remove them from the equation, right? So if you're talking about Boyle's Law, then any kind of constants we can literally remove. Now you could have done this, this, this is why I said there's more than one way you could do this. You could do this by putting all the constants over here at the same time, right? And you could say, okay, well that means PV equals R over NT, and R over NT is a constant, right? So, or or you could just simply remove it from this equation right here and say, oh, or that's going to just turn into because n, n is a constant, so n1 equals n2, t1 equals t2, then we could just divide, you know, divide both sides of the equation by that and just, um, remove that from the whole thing. And so p1 v1 equals p2 v2. Or you could do it for, let's say, Avogadro's Law or Charles' Law, Charles' Law, in Charles' Law, you're, you're dealing with a constant pressure situation and constant moles. And so for Charles' Law, you're going to just remove your, your P and your N, your P and your N, and you're going to be left with V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. Okay? And let me just briefly just deal. So the other way to do this is, okay, so if you are thinking, um, let's say, let's do the Charles' Law then. So if you're thinking for Charles' Law, in Charles Law, you're thinking, okay, you have a constant pressure, you have a constant number of moles. So what's that mean? That means that you have, well, let's divide, let's put all our constants on one side. So R N over P equals V over T. Well, this all is a constant, right? So R is a constant, N is a constant, P is a constant for a Charles Law situation, right? We're talking about the same number of moles of gas. We're talking about a constant pressure. So that's going to be, you know, some kind of constant is going to be equal to V over T, which is Charles' Law, right? And Charles, or you could say, you know, go back to the other form of Charles' Law, V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2, simply because V over T is a constant. 
So any way that you look at this is fine as long as you recognize this. And this is kind of the key that I'm going to be talking about today for this so-called combined gas law. Now your book talks about a combined gas law, but it really only talks about the combined gas law of removing the ends P V P1 V1 over T1 equals P2 V2 over T2. But literally, we can come up with a whole bunch of different combined gas laws. Why is that? Because you have this relationship and whatever is constant, we can remove from the equation. Whatever is constant, we can just remove from the equation. And if something's constant, your problem might not necessarily tell you that. Okay? Um, but whatever is constant, we can remove from the equation. So let's go ahead and look at plugging this into the new homework. And we have right here a combined gas law type problem. A piston is filled with 27.6 milliliters of gas at 15 degrees Celsius and 15.8 PSI. Because this is PSI, it's just going to be um, more difficult to do this in, in the ideal gas law situation. All right? So what we're going to do is we're going to use a combined gas law for this. So after heating the gas, the volume increases to this. What's the new pressure? So in order to solve this problem, we have to think about well, what's constant. We can see right away that this is not a normal ideal gas law problem because it says we have a before and after. We're heating this gas. We're increasing the temperature. Right? So we have a, a T1 and a T2. So let's go ahead and write that out. So we have T1 is 15 plus 273. So that's going to be um, 288 Kelvin. And we have a, a T2. Here's our after. This 922. Let me just do that real quick. So 922 plus 273 is going to be 1195. Okay, so we have a before and after for the temperature, and we have a before and after for the volume. So this is your initial volume. V1 equals 27.6 milliliters. V2 equals 97.1 milliliters. And we have a before pressure. A P1 equals 15 0.8 PSI, and we want to know what's P2. So what we're going to do in this case, rather than trying to solve some PV equals NRT situation, which we could do, we could try to figure out what is um, the only variable that's not given here. What is N? We could solve for N here, and then we could use that to solve PV equals NRT here. We could do two different PV equals NRTs. But we, in addition to that, we need to convert these to liters, convert this to ATM. That's going to be a bit of a pain. So I want to avoid that. And how can I avoid that? By using this, so this situation up here, and I can say, well, what's the constant? The constant is N, so I'm just going to remove N from here. Okay? And when I remove N, that gets me simply P1 V1 over T1 equals P2, V2 over T2. And if we're solving for P2, I'm just going to multiply both sides of the equation by T2 over V2. Okay? And that's going to get me the equation. And here you really got to keep track of what's 1 and what's 2. Okay? So, and otherwise, it's so easy to make a mistake. So P2 is going to be equal to what? It's going to be equal to P1, V1. And we want to multiply it by T2. So T2 over T1, divide both sides by V2, V2, okay? If that's tricky for you, you know, find another way, or you might want to do it one step at a time, right? You can, you can do this in two steps rather than just on one step. Two steps, right? Multiply both sides by the equation by T, and then divide both sides of the equation by V2, um, and then, then it'll work out. But let's just go ahead and solve this one. <clears throat> so my P2 is going to equal to P1, 15.8 PSI. And then I can leave my answer in PSI this way. V1 is, <coughs> excuse me, 27.6 milliliters. T2, 1195K. T1 on the bottom 
288k, V2 on the bottom, and that's 97.1 milliliter. All right, whole bunch of stuff, let's do it. No need to use R, no need to do this in two different steps. Let's do it all in one. So we have 15.8 times 27.6 times 1195 divided by 288 divided by 97.1. And then boom, my final answer is 18.6. 18 18.6. And the units are going to be what? Well, milliliters over milliliters cancel, K over K cancels, and we're left with PSI. That's my final answer. So that's a way to solve than doing two different PV equals NRTs, but you can do it both ways. You could solve first for N and then use that to solve for P2 over here. It's just a significantly more involved that way, in my opinion. In my opinion, this is easier. All right, one last thing that I wanna go through, number two and number three on your new homework. And then we're gonna be done. And that is for number two and number three, um, we are going to um, use this PV equals NRT in a stoichiometry type problem, which is going to be what your lab is going to be all about. All right, so let's try that out. We have magnesium added to, well, obviously, you're not going to do this reaction because you're not going to have hydrochloric acid at home. So we have magnesium added to hydrochloric acid, so HCl and the react to form hydrogen gas. That's gas is gonna be key here, and aqueous magnesium chloride. We know that magnesium chloride is MgCl2 because magnesium is a two plus charge there. And that's aqueous, that's aqueous, that's solid, but we don't really care too much about the states. To balance this, you need to have two chlorines, so we have gonna have a two here. That's also gonna balance the hydrogens and Everything's nice and balanced already. What kind of reaction is this? This is single replacement. We recognize this as one of those weird hydrogen single replacement reactions. So acids can do acid base reactions and they can also react with metals in a single replacement re um, type fashion. All right, so on to the real part of the problem here. Suppose that we wanted to fill a two liter balloon with hydrogen. How much magnesium and hydrochloric acid would you need? Well, um, we have the molarity of the hydrochloric acid there, but the real question is, well, how many moles of hydrogen do we need to produce? So we have two liters. We're gonna assume that we have got, gonna have a one ATM. So really this is an ideal gas law where it's PV equals NRT, and we're solving for N, okay? So because we're, we're pretty much either gonna be solving for N or solving for V in these kinds of problems. In this case, we're given V, so we're gonna be solving for N. So that's gonna give us N equals PV over RT. Our pressure is simply one, which is nice. Our volume is two, two liter balloon, two liters. Um, your R, is the same as always, 0 0.08206. And your temperature, 25 degrees Celsius, so that's 298 Kelvin. All right, and that is gonna get us N for number of moles of hydrogen. So let's do that. Two divided by um, R divided by 298 is 0 0.0818 moles of the gas. All right? Now, um, once we've got that, then we can figure out, and, and I'm going to have to scoot out here in a minute, um, but let me just go ahead and say, let me solve for one of the products, or one of the reactants, and then you can solve for the other one. Okay? So if we have 0 0.0818 moles of hydrogen that we need to produce in this reaction, we can solve for any of the other ones, okay? And so we're gonna say, okay, that's hydrogen, so let's go ahead and solve for the hydrochloric acid. So we have 
one H2 based on this reaction is, is made for every two HCl, right? And then we, that's going to get us from moles of hydrogen to moles of HCl. And last of all, we're going to use this molarity. Well, if we have moles of hydrogen, that's going to be 0.5 moles per liter of HCl right here. So let's go ahead and do that math, and that's going to get us the volume in liters of the HCl we need. You can convert that to milliliters if you want. So let's go ahead and use this volume, or the, the moles. So times 2 divided by 0.5 gets us 0 0.327. 0 0.3, well, we have only two sig figs, but 0.33 liters. Or um, if you're actually doing it in a lab, you want it pretty precise. So it's going to be 327 milliliters, right? Because we're going to move that decimal point. Now, sorry, guys, I'm going to have to skip out. I'm giving a test here, so I can't stay and answer any questions. But it looks like you guys haven't had any questions. You guys can do the same thing for that other reactant and... We're all out of time, so see you guys.